Namaste, good evening and welcome to the special series of Prime Newsroom, Children's Day Special. I am Craig Fernandez, your host for today. And we have with us a very special guest, the Health Minister of Goa, Mr. Vishwajit Rane. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much. It is my first time interviewing a politician. To begin with, tell us how you were as a child. I was very naughty as a child. Oh, okay. Very naughty. My parents used to punish me a lot because I used to not listen to anything they say. But then maybe I that punishment helped me in becoming a better person. Punishment means not exactly punishment, punishment, but I was very mischievous, beyond teacher's control. Okay. And then what made you join politics? Watching my father right from the time I was born, from my first year, man, when I was one year old, from then. He was in politics and getting in, you know, whenever I used to go with him, I used to, as I grew up, that was the environment I grew up in and I loved interacting with people. So whenever I used to meet people, I always had that urge of doing something for them. As I grew up, I used to see my father doing a lot of stuff for people and uh, basically that actually drove me towards, you know, that I had this urge in me to help people, resolve people's issues, try to do something good for them. And that got me into active politics. Now it's my 16th year in active politics. But as my father was in power for so many years, I used that opportunity to do a lot for the people. Oh, that's nice. Is your job as a minister very hard? Not really. Oh. Not really. Okay. I thought it it's, was hard. It's not hard. It's, uh, it's hard for people who don't understand what they have to do. It's easy for people who apply their mind and analyze exactly what the people of the state want. And also, just like you are in the grade five, you have to study. You have to also, as a minister, study exactly what the people want. And then you have to draw up a vision document for yourself, a roadmap exactly how you want to go forward and achieve things for the state and for the people. And accordingly, move forward. But then you need to take advice of people, everything a minister doesn't know and also you need to understand what is the requirement of the society and with multiple portfolios that I helped with me, they involve understanding subjects on a larger spectrum, it means on a larger scale. So it is very important for me to take good advice and try to do things better and follow the road map that is laid out, you know, step by step. Nice. What are the things you love about being a minister? You know, work hard, try to achieve things and try to, you know, if there's something good you can do for society, something new, like we're now in the health department, we're coming up with a cancer hospital, people suffer because they go to Bombay and they have to spend a lot of time in getting treatment. So whatever new thing, new innovations which are there in every field, whether it's urban development, where it comes into urban, you know, urban development is like all, it is more city oriented. Then there's town planning where you can do a lot in terms of planning and conservation and also trying to see you can develop the cities much better and more professionally. Then you have forest is also one of my portfolios where I'm trying to see how you can have safari parks and make a change, you know, what people want. But it's not very hard, it's okay and I, I, I don't know, it's... I'm used to it now for the last so many years, so I have my own thought process and I move in that direction. It's very interesting. And are there anything you don't like about being a minister? No. No? Okay. I love being a minister because being a minister, it helps you reach out to people. My constituency likes me. So if I get, get an opportunity to be a chief minister, then my chief minister through him, we are able to do a lot of good work for the people. So being in the cabinet helps you, definitely helps you serve your people much better. What will be your major steps towards health in Goa? Outreach. Basically, I want the poorest of poorest to get good health care. I don't want people to be running around from the... We have a structure of the sub... You call something called the sub-health centre. Then you have a primary health centre or a community health centre. Then you have district hospitals. Then you have the Goa Medical College, you know. So we have different... I want people at the village level, right in the remotest area, to get the best of healthcare. Especially diagnostic, blood diagnostics and several other things. So basic things can be detected early. So my thrust is on preventive medicine. 
preventive medicine is something where you can detect any kind of ailment in a person at a very early stage so that we can save their lives. So such several initiatives and verticals we are now doing. So this is something what I like as far as being a health minister is concerned. What was your favorite subject in school? Why did you like it? History. Why? Just it was very educative. History was one thing which I liked and then there used to be civics basically on the constitution and several other things. That was, those are the subjects which I really liked. Those were very easy subjects. History was because you know it taught you a lot about what you when we were small we used to read these Amar Chitra Katha and other things you know some old some some historical facts through a, uh, through the comic uh, books which we used, to, we used to get but uh, basically I liked history because it you know educated you on what right from what where what happened in the past to where we are today so I liked history was something that was always close me then another subject which I liked. As I grew up, was mass communication, which was there in commerce, and uh, yeah, couple of these things I liked. Then I, as I grew up, then I liked more on financial management and other things. When I went to my MBA, then I liked marketing. Marketing is something which was very interesting. So these are couple of things which I liked as I grew up. Okay, my favorite subject is maths. Maths, my God, I was very bad in maths. Because I like the. The different ways of solving sums. Yeah, yeah. you're good at maths. I'm good at maths. You should be teaching me maths. Then. Oh, okay. My maths is terrible, but I was good in accounting. But maths was terrible. I hated maths. I love to eat. My favorite is burgers and fish curry. What is yours? Mine is also. I love prawn curry and rice and all. But I have to now get away from the thought of loving. Food and eating because I put on too much weight. Now I have to reduce. My dietitian tells me that I have to reduce 12 kilos. So now I am now cutting off everything. I have enjoyed enough, and yeah, I love food. I love uh, exotic stuff like oysters and other things. So this is my favorite dish: is oysters. Grown-ups are very busy. What games just you used to play when you were? I used to play badminton. I used to represent Goa for my, uh, the national level. So that was one of my sports hobbies. So just today, yeah, today morning, I spoke to my coach who used to teach me about 25 years back, and he's still around, very active. So I said I want to just get back to the badminton court and just toss the shuttle around, and, you know, just sweat it out and just be there. I don't know whether how it'll be after going back to the court after about 20 odd years, but I am, I think, by next week, getting back. So badminton is something I really like and something I uh, enjoyed. That's nice. Even I like badminton. Yeah, you play badminton. Sometimes. Okay. And I hear you like photography. What I makes you like wildlife photography? Uh, from when I was a child, my uncle used to take me. He's written several books on photography, so he used to take me to the wildlife sanctuary. And we used to spend about a month or so every summer, you know, studying. Them. We used to photograph tigers and other things. So I, from there, I picked it on. There was a gap of ten years, and then I started back again. And yes, I go to different places. Spend about 14, 15 hours in the wild whenever I go. So in a year, I go about four, five times. So I was to go to Antarctica now, but then I cancelled it because I wanted to go and do the penguins. But then I was not fit enough to go because it's too cold and I was not prepared. So next year I'll go and do it. But this year, next, coming year, I'm planning to go to the Arctic and spend about 10 days. So basically to see polar bears, walrus, and all those type of things. I've done enough for wildcats. Leopards, cheetahs, and several I have seen kills happening in front of me. So I've done a lot of photography. I must be having about three, three and a half like photographs, like with me now, you know, in stock. So basically, I love photography. It's my passion that keeps me totally connected to the wild, totally connected to the environment, and overall, you know, and helps me in today's stressful world to totally detox. So that's very good and I love, I've got some very good cameras which I like to capture these moments. Now I do a lot of videos also. So this is something which I like and I that's something I'll never stop. I love pursuing that. And now I like to go to different levels in something that I've not seen. So now I'm going to Mongolia in February to do the snow leopards with a friend of mine. And uh, it's very difficult, it's not easy. Sometimes it sounds very easy. But then you have to go 
and rough it out and then take photographs spend time spend hours till you can see and get a good picture of a snow leopard i have not done a snow leopard before this friend of mine is going to take me and we are doing it and yeah i like to do now i want to do different things i want to now go to indonesia and do little bit of snorkeling and other things scuba diving and do those courses which you get so that i can do underground uh, underwater photography so that's something which i'm really looking forward to i've got the equipment but i need to go and train myself because i hate swimming so i need to see how i can do these short courses and get down to do underwater pho- photography it's very amazing and i did recently i did you must have seen the movie jaws you seen jaws the shark movie no so we went to south africa and we were out at sea and there was basically there is this th- island called the seal island so you are in a boat you are alone in a boat with about 2 3 fellow people it's a huge boat and that's the season when the sharks pass through that uh, area that those, those months i mean it's a month month and a half they are there so you you leave that special oil they get into the it's a fish oil or something like for freak for smell and uh, then after some time just like the movie jaws you find them circling your boat and coming towards your boat you know and then they come and you put a fish head or something like that you know so that they come close to you and then you get photographs of these but it is just like in the movies i had about eight sharks circling the vessel eight sharks big sharks circling the vessel so i got some good photographs so i like doing all this crazy stuff i love superheroes my favorite superhero is captain america Mine was Superman when I was small, even today. Uh, why? I liked the movie. I saw the movie. I liked him, and I liked the whole series. I love li- love that even to today. Yes, that's my most, that's the, my favorite. Yes, I like him too. And what superpower would you like to have? Superpower, like? Like any superpower. I think I have enough power. to do the service for the people i don't think i didn't understand superpower means what superpower how do you means like superman flying in so. i don't know to fly anywhere okay i don't know how to answer this question if you could be little again what is one thing you would like to do no oh. little again means go back into childhood yes oh my god i was a terrible student i was very naughty in class what i want to do as a as a go back into time yeah i would have been a most undisciplined student then when i go back in time but i was too disciplined in as a kid i'm talking about first standard second standard I'm very naughty i should run out of the class and all without the teacher knowing so maybe be more mischievous What is your dream in life? To serve the people, do whatever you do the best. And dream in life is like do everything in my life whatever people have not achieved like you know I'm going to the most difficult terrains and that is one of my passions which I want to do. See all the places and different you know get those experiences which people cannot access. One is that and then one is serve people. I have taken up a profession to serve the people. So I just want to see whatever best I can do over the next couple of years and see that the people are happy, try to get a good quality of life for them and see that they are happy with me with what I'm doing for them. It's really awesome. I hope it happens soon. Do you like bikes or cars? I like cars. Which one is your Which one is the coolest according to you? Maserati. Oh, that's nice. Mine is the Koenigsegg Agera RS. Which is that? Koenigsegg Agera RS. No, I have not heard of that. Oh, okay. And finally, could you give all the boys and girls a message for Children's Day? I would only suggest to you and all all the young students and you all are the future of this country. You need to work hard, study well. Your parents have a lot of expectations from all of you. My parents had expectations from me. You must live up to those expectations. whatever you do try to apply your mind and make sure that you excel in whatever you do today without education you can't achieve anything in life everything is looks very easy but your parents put a lot of effort in trying to educate you 
trying to see that they sacrifice everything to give you the best education so that you do well in life and you move forward. And I think that education, trust on education and the young generation must study, must do well, must excel. And you know, just by just doing a 10th standard or 12th standard won't be enough. Specialize in something. You know, the country needs you, the country is opening up in a different way. And you must live up to the expectations of your parents. Your parents have a dream and a plan for you and you must live up to it and make them proud of And that is all that we have here for today. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you, Greg. It was a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you. We wish you all the best in all that you do. Thank you so much. It was nice catching up with you. Thank you so much.